This next man right here, he's an expert at raising veg kids and just raising kids in general. He's got a PhD in education, been vegan for 34 years, and trustee of American Vegan Society for 30 years. Runs veg kids organization helping to connect veg kids with other veg children. Entering his 25th year of the camp exploration, totally vegan camp for kids. Ladies and gentlemen, San Francisco, give it up for Dr. Andy Mars. All right, thank you, San Francisco. I have so much information I am going to try and share with you in the limited time that I have. Those of you who have heard me speak before, you know I always try to pack the information into the limited time that we have. I'm going to give you an hour and a half of information in 45 minutes. All right, you ready for this? First slide, Uncle Sam wants you to please turn off your cell phone, turn it on vibrate, turn it off, whatever the case might be. Raising a vegan generation, that is what we are here for. You don't need to be a parent to be in this room. You don't need to be a teacher to be in this room. You don't need to be a kid in this room. You need to be a conscious, concerned world citizen who wants a better tomorrow. I am going to share a lot of information with you, I'm sure. I hope I'm going to educate you well. And I especially am confident you are going to be inspired by the end of this presentation, as long as you bear with me. Raising a vegan generation, I want you to learn about some, not all, in one session. How are we raising a vegan generation already in this world? How well are we raising a vegan generation thus far? And how can we be raising a more vegan generation? And I'm glad to see some of the young people in the room who are part of the next vegan generation. Kids are always listening. Usually when we don't want them to be listening is when they listen their most. Those of you who are the parents in the room, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Kids are watching what we're doing. Therefore, we need consistency and clarity, and we need to walk our talk and not say one thing and do something else for the kids to not get the clear message. We have kids who are thinking, and we have kids who are feeling, and let's take it to the next level. Let's start briefly. Excuse me. What do you need? Not here. Okay. All right. Apologies for the interruption. I owed two more minutes. No. Okay. Why kids go vegan? A lot of reasons why any of us adults or kids might go vegan, but I summarize it into three simple components here. For the sake of the animals, which really, without the animals, there is no veganism. Veganism is an ethical conviction of life. It's not just a diet. Some people are on a plant-based diet, but they don't have the vegan connection, the vegan consciousness. Being vegan is about the animals. But if we go vegan because we care about our health and it takes us in the right direction, that's a great way to get there. If we go vegan because we're concerned about the environmental impact on the planet, that's a great way to get there too. Whatever way we start going there, let's just keep moving in the right direction. Why and how some kids go vegan? Some kids are raised vegan since birth. I'm curious. Any kids in the room, raise your hand if you've been vegan since birth. Or any adults who were raised vegan since birth. I am really proud of the handful of you who are there who have been raised vegan since birth. And I'm really proud of your parents, of course, even more so than you. Raised vegan after prior being raised non-vegan. Are you a kid in the room or were an adult who was starting to be raised non-vegan and then somewhere along the way your parents changed life? on you. Cool. All right. Individual choice with your family following. A lot of the kids in LA that I work with, by the way, from our Veg Kids organization, some of our most active kids are kids who've chosen to go vegan. They don't have vegan parents. They make the commitment on their own. You're going to learn about some of them in a little bit. And some of their parents follow along. And then, of course, there's the ones where their parents don't follow along and they struggle on their own, but they succeed because they're committed to it. Good to know why and how some kids go vegan. Let's talk briefly about some of the struggles. Some of you will relate to these. I'm going to answer how to handle these struggles some later in the presentation, and I want to make it very clear. If I do not answer each and every question that you might have during the limited time that I have to give you this presentation right now, I ask you, I urge you, I encourage you, please haunt me, stalk me, follow me to the kids' area in the exhibit hall, because there will be another speaker in here after me, and I'm going to run out of time, and I want you to make sure that you get your questions answered. But potential struggles for vegan kids. There are struggles at home if your parents are not vegan. If your parents are vegan, it's not such a big deal, right? At family functions, maybe your parents are vegan, but maybe you're at grandmas and grandpas or aunts and uncles and they, let's just say, don't get it. That's where struggles could exist. At school lunches, 
at school events, with clubs and teams, at church, synagogue, mosques, carnivals, amusement parks, movies, malls, food courts, etc., at camps, on school trips, at meals at friends' homes, at overnights at friends' homes, at friends' birthday parties. That's kind of my summary of all the struggles, and I have an answer to every one of them for you. I hope to get there before this session is over. And one of the simplest answers is keep snacks with you wherever you are. When you are prepared with good food to eat wherever you are, you do not then get tempted to eat the something else that you really shouldn't be eating that somebody else may want to be offering. Those of you who know me, short time, long time, you know that I am always well equipped with enough food, as the kids at camp say, to feed a small country. Okay? We are never without food. We're never worrying about it because we are prepared. Where to keep snacks, though? If your school allows it, in your desk. Some schools don't. Don't break the rules. In your locker. In your backpack is a biggie. Sports bags, if you play soccer or baseball, whatever the case might be. Teacher's closet. School office. Sometimes the secretary in the front office of a school will keep something in a closet, in a cupboard, etc. for you. At extracurriculars, at religious school, dojo, wherever you go. In the car. Keep food in the car, unless your parents don't let you eat in the car. Some parents are like that. Okay? In the home kitchen, obviously. But what about at close relatives' kitchens? If you spend time at grandma's or grandpa's and they don't normally have the kind of food that you want to be eating or that you know you should be eating, then you should be stocking their freezer, stocking their cupboard with things that you know you will be happy to eat when you are there, and at close friends' kitchens, same kind of thing if you spend a lot of time at somebody's house. Now, I'm going to move along here. Some easy snacks to consider. You can make little Ziploc baggies out of many snacks of things that you know that you will like. Some kid favorites that I know are trail mix, nuts and seeds, dried fruit, dried lentils and legumes, bars, not promoting any particular company over another, but some of the most popular bars of kids I work with are things like Cliff Bars, Go Macro Bars, Macro Life Bars, other sealed snacks, fruit leather, jerky, seaweed, Rhythm Superfoods makes things like kale chips and broccoli chips and things like that. Olives, big popular snack with a lot of kids I know in LA. I don't know. Olives are cool. Cool Cups, they make the vegan Jello Cups. Go Max Go makes vegan candy bars that are like never met, make you miss a Snickers or a Milky Way again. Okay. Mary's Gone Crackers. They make cookies and crackers and they're, you know, allergy free and amazing company. Those are just some ideas. This kind of looks similar to our booth outside. One thing that we do that I do to help raise a vegan generation is I set up a booth space at events like this, but I also set up a booth space at events that are not like this. We don't only want to be preaching to the choir. We don't only want to be having booths at events where people are already coming to get the information we have to provide them. We want to be there where they're not looking for that information, not realizing it because we have information to provide. So you can see a bunch of parents crowded around a veg kids booth trying to get information. You can see a couple of our great kids there teaching kids our, um, some of our games and things like that. These are just some of our happy wonderful kids. Um, on the bottom there, you probably can't read. That's our Veg Kids t-shirt. Um, I will maybe let you look at one at the end of the presentation. You have one here? Do you have yours here? Okay, it's all right. I'll show later. Okay. One of the things that we do when we do events, and it's not just at vegan events, environmental events, school fairs and functions and things like that, is we're trying to outreach and help raise a more conscious generation. That is the mission. That is my reason for being on this planet Earth. My name may be Andy Mars, but I am here on Earth to raise a more conscious generation. Okay? So the top slides there, these slides you can see, we set up one of the stations we had outside earlier today is our animal origami station. We get kids taking paper, folding it with instructions, on how to make a little cow, a pig, uh, a, 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 a cat, a dog, etc. And kids start folding and they start realizing, hey, wait a minute, the fold that I just made with that dog is very similar to the fold that I make with that cow. And they start making subconscious connections. It's really cool. We also have our little kind of pochinko type thing there where kids drop the uh, little token and they win PETA stickers. Yay, everybody wants to win a sticker. And then they get to see what the message is. We have our friend or food game, one of the greatest games I've ever seen. I can take credit that I created this about 10 years ago. It's not on the market. Anybody wants to help me package it, we can figure out a way. But it's a really cool concept where what we are doing is we are telling, and I don't know if you can't see it clearly here, you can see it more at the booth later on, but we have a scene of nature side by side with a plate. And we have little laminated cards of animals, fruits, veggies, etc. And we have kids come up to the table and we try to get them to think about which is your friend, which is your food. My food has vitamins and nutrients and it belongs on my plate going into my tummy. My friends have feelings. They have the ability to feel pain. They have hearts. They have eyes. They have mouths. They can, you know, they, they can swim or they can fly or they can run. And we get kids to see the connection and it has done wonders, not just for vegan kids to feel 
good about where they are and that, hey, they know the difference, but for non-vegan kids as well. It's outreach people. These, we had these at the booth. These are some comic books that are put out by PETA. I like to give credit where credit is due. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals has these really cool consciousness-raising comic books, and we have these at all of our events. In fact, when trick-or-treaters come to my door for Halloween at the end of the month, they get nice vegan comic books. We have our coloring station where we have pictures where this label at the top of the page is we encourage you to consciously care and there's pictures of animals. Then there's pages that say we encourage you to consciously enjoy and there's pictures of foods to be eaten and the kids enjoy the coloring pages. Here's one of the pages. See, we encourage you to consciously enjoy. See the animals. We encourage you to consciously care. More food, encourage you to consciously enjoy. More animals, encourage you to consciously care. Then we have our word searches. In this apple, there are about a hundred different names of fruits, veggies, nuts, seeds, etc. And again, it's a subtle message for kids. They're searching in there for to find their food. They're foraging for their food and they are only finding in there things that are really food. Whereas this with the happy face, find your friends and there are about a hundred different kinds of animals in there. Again, just some of the things we do for conscious outreach. Again, trying to raise a more conscious generation. Here's some happy kids doing some of their coloring. Yes, some kids here were playing hexagonal hockey over there because kids need to also be able to physically move. So when we set up a kids area, whether it be at this veg fest, other veg fests, other kids events, we believe very strongly in meeting all directions that different kids are coming from. Some kids need to move. So let's give them a chance to move and not expect everybody to sit there and listen to story time. Some kids need to create. Let's give them the chance to create. Some kids need it to come through their hearts. Some kids need it to come through their minds. Let's give them all of those opportunities. Here's some great board games that we have at events a lot as well that are just very consciousness raising board games. Kids Make a Difference, by the way, is the nonprofit foundation that I created 25 years ago and it is all about raising a more conscious generation of kids. It is a vegan organization because that is a key part of the consciousness, but Kids Make a Difference website doesn't speak specifically of the V word, just like our camp programs. We have two camp websites. Vegancamp.org is pretty clear that a parent or a child looking for a vegan camp is going to know that they are finding a vegan camp at vegancamp.org. But our main camp website is campexploration.org because for 25 years, that's the official name of the camp, and we've had hundreds and hundreds of kids who come to the camp through campexploration.org, and on the website it says healthy conscious foods, healthy conscious programs, and nobody questions the words healthy conscious, but if we were to put the V word there, parents would not send their children if their kids are not being raised vegan, and in the process, instead, we have had hundreds and hundreds of kids who've come to join us at vegan camp programs who have gone vegan, not that we push it on them, but that's the message when they ask questions, and that is the food that they're eating, and that is the activities. There happens to be another camp, I won't speak of it by name, that claims to be a vegan camp. It's the only other camp I know that claims to be a vegan camp for kids, yet they take the kids fishing, but they throw the fish back into the water. That's not a vegan camp. Their food may be plant-based. There's a school I know, another school I know that happens to claim to be a vegan school. It's plant-based, but it's not vegan. While they're dissecting on animals in their science labs, that's not a vegan school. Okay? Anyway, Kids Make a Difference is a very friendly organization to people from all walks of life. How can you object to kids make a difference, right? In fact, you might see outside our big giant purple van, the kids make a difference purple van out there. Parenting education, another thing I'm very actively involved in. If you want to help raise a more conscious generation, you cannot just reach out to the kids. You also have to be reaching out to the parents because parents have a great impact on their children. And therefore, actually, I work with LAPD in Los Angeles and we have free monthly parenting education classes and every month is a different topic. March, as an example, is very specifically always raising healthy kids, spring cleaning your bodies as we go into the season of spring, not just spring cleaning our homes as everybody focuses on. People in, in March start cleaning their, their, their cars more than they ever did during the previous seasons, but let's clean our bodies and let's purify ourselves and purify the world in the process. So that's just another bit of information for you there. You can see this is one of the events that we did. This was at a country club in Los Angeles that was doing an event for kids and it was an ice cream social. So I offered to this organization, first I asked them, are you having, have, having any vegan ice cream? And they said, vegan ice cream? I said, well, if you're not already planning on it, I would be happy to donate vegan ice cream and we can come and set up a separate booth for those who are seeking and wanting a more conscious alternative. They said, you're going to donate it? It's not going to cost us anything? I said, no, of course not. They said, okay. So we had a nice vegan outreach booth there. And can I tell you, there was a longer line for our ice cream as the day went on as kids were raving about it. It was a really cool thing. 
Getting kids involved in food, getting them involved in food preparation goes a long way. When parents just prepare food for kids, it's not the same thing as if you get the kids involved. When you get the kids involved, they feel a connection to it more. That's one of the reasons, by the way, in 25 years of our vegan camp programs, we have not once, 25 years, approximately 10 weeks of summer camp a year, that's over 250 weeks a year when you add in winter camp. I'm 250 weeks a year. 250 weeks of our camp programs. We have never once had a complaint from a kid about food. I cannot tell, I, I have yet to find through the American Camping Association another camp in the entire country that does not have kids complaining about food. It's usually the biggest complaint about kids about food, and it's not because of the vegan issue. It's just because it's industrial garbage, okay? But we have never had a kid complain about the food but we get the kids involved in the food and that really helps them love it, okay? We did, this was at the Orange County Book Fair down in Los Angeles, down at Orange Coast College. It was a book fair. Well, we got some vegan books at a table. We had joined the book fair and we were sampling out good vegan food to go along with it. And again, people absolutely loved it. Kids love amusement parks, right? Which kids in here like rides? Okay, some of you are shaking your heads. You're being quiet and respectful. I appreciate that. Knott's Berry Farm which has got this whole down-home country feel to it. It's not exactly a place you'd expect to find vegan food. Knott's Berry Farm invited some of the kids from our Veg Kids organization. We went down there. We helped them decide which foods were palatable for kids and which ones kids would not want to eat. And we ended up getting them, as you can see the top sign there, welcoming Veg Kids to Knott's Berry Farm. And we helped them add a number of vegan options. Tony here on the bottom is eating a nice little vegan hot dog like they have out here at Knott's Berry Farm. Look at Knott's Berry Farm's signs there. Buttermilk breaded vegan chicken fingers. Sound good? Vegan mac and cheese, vegan cheese pizza. Those were just a quarter of the options of things that Knott's Berry Farm now has thanks to our veg kids who are actively involved and reaching out and writing letters and sending emails and trying to change the world around them. We're helping them change. They're helping the world change. Even Six Flags Magic Mountain. Daya's walking right into Six Flags Magic Mountain to seize the Daya. Magic Mountain has more vegan options now than any amusement park I have ever seen. It is amazing. They have an incredible vegan meatball sub and vegan chicken nuggets. And they also have vegan sushi and goza and edamame and hijiki. I mean, amazing. For those of you who don't even know what great vegan foods I'm talking about, they have a lot of really cool things there. And, well, sometimes we go to a place like we were at Hurricane Harbor, which didn't have the vegan options. So we went in and we brought our own and everybody around us, all these other camp, camps of kids during the summer are looking at what our kids are eating and they were loving it. We're eating chili cheese dogs and chili fries that we brought into Hurricane Harbor to tantalize them. But it's not just about food, people. Why are we vegan? Because we love and care about animals. We do not want anyone or anything to suffer and die for us. That's what veganism really is. Okay, and so one of the best things you can do is get kids involved with animals. When a child has the opportunity to be kissed by a cow, they're not going to want to eat a burger again. All right, so we take kids. This is Bruno. Bruno's my Jersey boy cow. Okay, down at Farm Sanctuary down in Los Angeles area. All right, and some of the kids just loving up with Bruno there. But it, what is this about? This is about our hearts, right? Whether you make your own little heart, or you get together with somebody else and you make a heart, or you get together with a nice, even bigger group and make heart the more of us that come together the bigger heart we can make getting kids out and about in other community events things like getting them involved like I said with their food going to in LA we've got apple orchards within an hour we've got orange groves within an hour getting kids out there to the farms and fields you know how many LA kids until we've taken them have never experienced being on a farm like that getting kids out into nature and enjoying and appreciating nature and again getting kids connecting with animals those wonderful beautiful creatures on the bottom of the page this happens to be a friend of mine's son and he is a kid who is obsessed with reading books about fish and sharks and sea life and we happened to go to a restaurant together and I helped him realize as we're eating vegan fish at this restaurant that he can enjoy the tastes of things that he used to like without hurting the creatures that he loves so much. And again, taste buds go a long way. Okay? There's Mikey being kissed by a cow. Never going to want to eat a cow again, right? And then down on the bottom, there we are at camp eating veggie burgers, which can be a lot better than the other kinds of burgers. More kids getting involved with animals. You see it. Many wonderful, loving creatures. 
we did a great event. We were invited to the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas. Veg Kids took a road trip to Vegas. No, we did not know ga go gambling. We did not do other things that are available up and down the strip there. But we went to the Wynn Hotel and we had an incredible vegan buffet and helped them understand again what foods kids would love on the vegan buffet at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas. These kids, as you can tell, were very, very happy campers there, uh, being able to feast till their heart's content. We spent four hours sitting at a table, eating, and just enjoying and giving our opinions about food. Who thinks that's a dream of an afternoon? But it's not just about food, and it's not just about animals. It's about consciousness. We need to teach kids to look at the world around them, whether we look on a microscopic scale or a macroscopic scale. When we look down at the little critters and insects or we look up at the stars, we need to help kids understand that we are but one part of the world and we need to understand our place in this universe. And speaking of understanding our place in this universe, many of you kids, parents, you want your kids to read books. Kids, your teachers want you to read books. When you have the choice to select a book for a book report, I encourage you to select a book that will give you an opportunity to teach a valuable lesson to your classmates, okay? Any of you teachers in the room, if your school will allow you, select a book that has great messages. These are just a few examples. How anyone could have read Upton Sinclair's The Jungle and not gone vegan back in the day, I do not understand. Who's read Upton Sinclair's The Jungle back in the day, right? It's a story about the slaughterhouse industry great book. Charlotte's Web. Does not that story teach about love and compassion? That's what we need kids to learn more about. But we can also, teachers, I'm talking to you right now especially, parents who do homeschooling, I'm talking to you right now, and parents who can volunteer in classrooms if you have the time and opportunity to help teachers. Teachers love it when parents come into the classroom to help, if you're helpful, right? Social studies, you don't have to have a Thanksgiving turkey based holiday experience you can teach a lesson about the origin of Thanksgiving did you know that Thanksgiving was a vegan holiday at its very beginnings at a very core it was called the festival of the three sisters the native tribes of the northeast of this country were giving thanks to mother earth for the foods that would sustain them through the long cold winter when they could not pick food from the ground I know we live in California and we don't know, know what this frozen ground stuff is all about but many people on this planet do have to deal with that and the native tribes realized that if you pick corn or beans, or squash, and you put it in the corner of your teepee and let it sit there for a few months. It's not going to go bad. It will sit there, and you can use it three months later, and it will sustain you through the long, cold winter. That's what Thanksgiving was. It was a harvest holiday to give thanks to Mother Earth for foods that would sustain us through the long, cold winter. So there's just another example of a lesson. I could spend hours going on and on about lessons that we can teach in classrooms, but I'm going to jump through some things kind of quickly here dissection it is archaic it is outdated it is utterly irresponsible and inhumane even the last medical school in the united states just this past year stopped doing unnecessary animal testing and we have pcrm the physicians committee for responsible medicine to thank for their lobbying efforts there are no medical schools in this country that are doing that unnecessary animal dissection anymore and if it's not necessary to become a doctor why is it necessary for a fourth grader or a seventh grader or an 11th grader it makes no sense to me but there are programs like digital frog and other such programs that can actually teach the same lessons in a much more meaningful and effective way that are computerized that are digital that give you the same kind of visual interconnectedness without the inhumanity writing prompts I could spend hours talking about writing prompts that teachers could give in a classroom to raise consciousness I'll just use this first one man is the only creature that consumes without producing he does not give milk he does not lay eggs he is too weak to pull the plow he cannot run fast enough to catch rabbits yet he is lord of all the animals quote from George Wells George Orwell's animal farm so there's a great writing prompt to what extent should humans be allowed to use other animals for meat and scientific research don't need to push your opinion on other students if you're a teacher or a student in a classroom but you can get people thinking and questioning and realizing there's got to be a better way another long writing prompt another long writing prompt even math you can raise consciousness in classrooms have you ever thought about math can actually connect with messages look at the pie chart okay that tiny little purplish thing at the top, that little sliver of a slice, is 
grain production's contribution to pollution. That big giant red slice on the side, on the right, the meat industry's contribution to pollution. Compare that to the orange slice of the car, okay? This is incredible visual for all of us, but when you're teaching, be it homeschooling or a teacher in a classroom or a parent volunteering and creating math worksheets for the teacher in the classroom, this is a great pie chart to learn about fractions and percents and decimals and ratios and all of that good stuff, right? How about the word problem on the bottom? We love word problems, right? If there are 84 dogs at the pound and six of them are adopted over the weekend, then what percentage still need to be adopted? Why have meaningless word problems that are just kind of silly little things? Let's turn it into valuable lessons. This, by the way, Noah here, we are at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. You've heard me talk about them before, and I will talk about them again. I cannot speak highly enough about another nonprofit organization. They are a group of doctors raising a more conscious world like we are a group raising more conscious kids. And getting kids involved with PCRM and even getting to meet Moby on the bottom of the page there, as you see, is a great opportunity where we are helping kids realize that they are not alone in this world. There are great professional, be it musicians, doctors, Dr. Neil Bernard there, um, the young lady on the far right of the middle picture, on the opposite side of Dr. Barnard, she just started studying at Cornell University, studying to be a vegan nutritionist, and these are just some of our wonderful veg kids. This young man actually lives in Northern California, up here. Hmm, he didn't make it this weekend though. Not that I'm aware of yet. But this little alien came down to L.A. to join us for camp. Thus, he's beaming down, as you can see there. And what are we about? Helping kids fly. Okay? We are trying to help kids soar and realize that they have the power to fly, the power to make a difference. You all have the power to make a difference, adults and kids alike. And this kid, he came down, he was being raised by a vegan parent, but it strengthened him and committed him to how important it was to be vegan. He wasn't vegan yet until he joined us, even though he had a vegan parent, and coming down and joining our programs helped him become more confident and secure and realizing he wasn't the only kid being raised by such crazy parents, right? This kid... Jason, look at him flying. Look at him soar. Okay, these are just some of our cool camp pictures. Jason was not vegan when he came to camp. Was not vegan the first day he was at camp. Second day, we are at an animal sanctuary. He's making a lot of new friends. Feathered friends, furry friends, four-legged friends. The end of that second day, and one of the kids who was there with us was amazed at this. She watched this metamorphosis take place within the first couple of days. He said, I don't think I can ever eat an animal again. That was the second day. Third day, this is the quickest transformation I've seen. He said, all right, I got to do this vegan thing. And look what transformation can take place. Now, we're going to hear from some of the kids. If I was in LA, we might have some of our kids with us who would actually talk to us and be a part of a presentation. But they're going to speak to us right here. I surveyed, this was three years ago, so these kids are a little older now. Three years ago, I surveyed a group of vegan kids and asked them certain questions, and these are their answers. I asked, being a veg kid, is it easy or hard? Dan says, I've been vegan since I was born, and it's easy since I don't know any different. That's just the norm to him. Alexis at 13 says, some of my friends don't care, while some think I'm living an impossible life. Colin at 11 says, the hardest part of being vegan is looking at all the delicious looking non-vegan desserts in the bakery or market. Although they can all be made vegan, most places you go, they're not vegan. So Colin is bothered by the temptation, but let's listen to Colin one more time. But you can veganize everything, so don't feel like you're missing out. So Colin learned, you may not be able to get the immediate gratification that you want of that incredible looking whatever in front of you at that moment in time. But that doesn't mean you can't get it later on if you're willing to be patient and stand by your ethics and get a different version thereof. Noah says, it can be hard not being able to eat everything my friends are eating. Solomon at four and a half. It's easy by eating vegan stuff. Hero, Hero is one of my amazing little heroes. Hero went vegan when he was about 11. He was 14 in this survey and he's 17 now. Hero, to see him at his school at lunch, he makes veganism cool and hip and every kid at his high school wants to be like him. He's one of the most fit, most buff kids you can imagine. He hates sitting around wasting time when his friends are just sitting there and on their phones or talking. He gets down and starts doing push-ups. He doesn't want to waste his time, okay? At lunch, 
everybody's pulling out all their junky food or buying their junky food at school. What does Hero do? He pulls out his cooler. He opens up the cooler. He pulls out his battery-operated portable Hulk Hogan blender. And he starts making smoothies right there at the picnic table every day. And you know what? He knows. Other kids are going to want to try it. So you know what he does? He pulls out sample cups, and he starts sampling out smoothies at lunch. And he's okay. If he doesn't drink as much of it or eat as much of it, he'd rather help other kids along the way. He knows he can have more later. So Hero says, how do you feel? I feel awesome being, he's a Southern California kid. I feel awesome being vegan. I'm in top shape with my body, mind, and soul all at one together. Alexis, how do you feel? Being vegan, I no longer feel guilty about contributing to animal cruelty. I feel energized and overall, just great. Mark, at age 10, it's the right thing to do. So how could I not feel good? Danny, at 11, I feel at peace. Ashley, at 13, not everyone cares about animals, but knowing facts about health and the environment helps others stop and think. So how do you handle it? This is one key answer to answer a lot of your questions. Be prepared with answers to the questions you know somebody's going to ask. And some of you adults have been around the block a few times, like I have 35 years of being vegan. The intro was wrong. It's actually 35, but that's an intro from last year. It's okay. Um, 34 plus 1, I think, is 35. Be armed with information. You know somebody's going to ask you, well, where do you get your protein? Don't you need milk for calcium? If you are armed with, and I have an answer for every one of these questions, if you don't know what answer to give, see me later, and I will give you answers that are simple and articulate and all of that, but the simplification that I want to make right now is be prepared with information. You're going to see that coming up again and again. Alexis at 13 says, be prepared for when people will ask you questions. 11, Stephen says at 11, get educated, read ingredients, and do what you know is right. Noah at 9 says, if someone offers me food that's not vegan, I'll just say I'm vegan and explain why. Solomon at four and a half. Some adults try telling me what's not true, but I teach them about being vegan. Solomon's parents are both vegan educators, I will let you know. Tyler at 11. How do you deal with parents? Now, some of you in this room, if you are a vegan kid struggling to become vegan, to be vegan, and your parents are not, these quotes will really empower you. And those of you who are not even here with kids, be inspired by these kids who you're about to hear from right now who are vegan kids who went vegan, who are committed to being vegan, even though they have no parent in their home in their lives who is actually vegan. Tyler says, my parents try to get me to stop being vegan, but as long as I'm healthy, how can they uh, uh, complain? Right? Be a walking poster child of healthfulness and your parents are not going to complain. Danny at 11. Oh, little Danny. Danny is one of the most mild-mannered, soft-spoken kids you could ever imagine. And I have trouble picturing a story he has told me that he has given permission for me, obviously, to tell you. I don't talk about these kids without their permission. Danny, his parents are divorced, two separate homes. He bounces back and forth. The only thing his parents actually agree on is they don't want their kid to be vegan. Everything else they disagree on. That's about the only thing they agree on. Danny told me one time he was in the kitchen at his mother's apartment. Mom is trying, this is when he went vegan when he was seven years old on his own. His mom is trying to force a fork, as he says, of dead flesh into his mouth. He's clenching his teeth shut. He's clenching onto the armrest of the chair for dear life to hold his mouth shut and not let that dead flesh enter his mouth. His mom gets so frustrated, or as he says, frustrated, and she walks over to the sink. And I can picture this because I've heard him tell this story so many times. He walks, she, he, she walks over to the sink and she takes the fork out of anger and throws it into the sink. She's so upset. And then he screams at the top of his lungs, which I just can't picture, but I trust him. And he tells me he did it. I believe it. He says... If you keep trying to make me eat dead animals, then I'll be your dead animal because then I won't eat anything. So Danny says, no matter how hard my parents try to force me to stop my vegan commitment, they just can't. Mark at 10, and Mark you'll hear more from later, but he's an award-winning journalist. He went vegan when he was eight years old. He's been published in Vegan Health and Fitness Magazine, in the American Vegan Magazine, in the Veg Journal. He is one of the most prolific little vegan writers that you can imagine. And he's now 13 years old. But at 10 years old, Mark said, I'm not going to cause pain and suffering to animals just because other people like my parents and friends do. They let me do what I'm doing because I don't give them a choice. And I think deep inside they know I'm right, but they just don't want to change themselves. Hero, how do you deal with friends? 
I make being vegan cool. And my friends ask to try my food and really like it. They also like how fit I am and try to be like me. I lead the way right. How you act and represent makes a big difference. And that is one of the key messages I want to get across as well. Be a confident vegan, okay? Be secure in where you're coming from. Walk your walk, talk your talk, live your life with consistency, and let people realize how secure you are. Don't be a wishy-washy vegan. You know, people will sense that and they will take advantage of it and make you feel even weaker. Ashley at age 13, how do you deal with friends? Most kids don't get it, but even friends who don't get it, if they're real friends, at least they support me for it, right? Real friends are not going to work against your good values. David at 12, how do you do with friends? Big message. Bring lots of extra good vegan food where you go. Then you can share how good, really good vegan foods are, and that can help others like it and go vegan. So bring lots to share. You heard me already say before, be prepared, be prepared, and be prepared with loads and loads of vegan food. Solomon at four and a half, how do you deal with friends? I teach the kids that are not vegan to be vegan. Camp, real quick quotes. These are from kids who obviously went to some non-vegan camps at one point in their lives. Ben says at 14, my old camp had vegan food. White pasta, water lettuce, canned beans, potato chips, and other unhealthy choices like that. At Camp Exploration, I eat the best I do all year. Olivia at 13, before I found Camp Exploration, I went to a camp that tried to make me eat chicken, saying it was the vegetarian meal. Danny at 11, I wish I could live at vegan camp. Noah at 9, at the vegan camp I went to this summer, it was nice for once to be able to eat the food that they had there. Chelsea at 14, where do you get support is this question. Going to events with other veg kids has helped me feel the support I need. And that's really key. Veg kids need to connect with other veg. Look, why are you all here? Right? This is a veg fest. Why did you come to a veg fest if you're already veg? Because you want the support. It's like group therapy, people, right? Okay? To know that you're not the only crazy person on this planet who believes what you believe and is trying to live as you live. I went vegan 35 years ago. I didn't even know there was a word for me yet. It took two years before I came across the word vegan. And when I came across the word vegan, I was flabbergasted to realize, whoa, there's a word that describes what I believe. That means I'm not the only crazy person on this planet who actually has these ethical convictions. Danny at 11, where do you get support? I don't know any other veg kids at school, but I stand strong. Connecting on Facebook with other veg kids does help. Yes, he was 11 when he wrote this. And he was on Facebook at eight years old. Um, but he's an incredibly responsible kid. We know you're supposed to be 13. I'm not condoning or approving of it, parents. But some of these kids use things like Facebook as a forum for communication, a forum for activism. And as long as they're being responsible, I'm okay with it and I keep an eye on it. We do have a Veg Kids page for the Veg Kids to connect with each other on Facebook, but it is well monitored and we've never had an issue there. Mark at 10, where do you get support? The biggest support to me are facts. I know the facts in my mind and I care in my heart. That's the best support of all. Joining online groups is good. Veg Kids events and knowing other Veg Kids on Facebook is great and Andy really helps, especially with my parents. There's Mark giving a presentation at his school. Okay, he's a big activist. His website, if you want to follow him, is thekidsays.com. Okay, you also have vegancamp.org and vegkids.org. This is an essay that Mark wrote for school. I'm not expecting you to read it right now, but I'm going to quick summarize for you. You can read it on his website of thekidsays.com. I think it said, right, thekidsays.com, which takes you to a Facebook professional writing page. His little essay was called, Who Can Guess What's in My Pillow? <laughs> They went on an outdoor education trip for school. The note that they went home for the kids for permission slips said, you cannot bring food in your backpack. You cannot bring food in your bag. He followed the rules. He stuffed his pillow with food. Okay? And then the essay they had to write when they came back was, what was the best lesson, the most valuable lesson you learned on this trip? And what did he write about? Be prepared and don't expect somebody else to provide for you. And he explains on and on in here about how to be prepared and how he was prepared and how he helped others. This is a meme or a mem, depending on how you want to pronounce it, right, that Mark created for Mother's Day. It's on his website there. One for Christmas, all with vegan messages. This is his Halloween mem or meme, okay? This is an article from Vegan Health and Fitness Magazine from last October's issue, but I know he never posted it on his website, and he told me he's going to post it this, this month. It's being a vegan kid at Halloween. Real simply, the quick little lesson that he tries to teach other kids is feel free to dress up. Feel free to go door-to-door -door trick-or-treating with your friends, but don't go with an empty bag. 
Go with a full bag. Don't expect to come home with your bag full. Expect to come home with your bag empty. And he goes trick-or-treating. He lets his friends go up to the door. He stands in the back. They go trick-or-treating, and they are all getting, you know, their candy and their junk and whatever. And then whoever's at the door will typically, you know, be like, oh, oh, little boy, um, I'm sorry, I don't want to miss you. Here's something for you. And he says, oh, no, 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 thanks. I'm not here to take anything from you, but I'd like to give you something. And he gives them some PCRM vegan literature. That's just one of his suggestions in his article on being a vegan kid at Halloween. Here's his article on vegan s'mores, also in Vegan Health and Fitness Magazine. This is a letter he wrote the CEO of Ringling Brothers a couple of years ago before Ringling Brothers decided to shut down, but he was one of the key people influencing Ringling Brothers, writing letter after letter and helping them realize, he says, if you're going to stay in business, you need to go the way of Cirque du Soleil, the kind of circus where people can choose to be in the circus if they want to, but animals don't have the choice, so we cannot be supporting that anymore, okay? This is a letter he wrote to the school board, LAUSD, about vegan food options, and he has been meeting with different school board members and helping them along their way as well. This is, truthfully, the greatest piece of writing that I have seen in the vegan world. I give much props to many people. Ocean, who was speaking before me, his dad, John Robbins, his book, Diet for New America, probably transformed almost more people to vegan than any other single piece of writing. Howard Lyman's Mad Cowboy also did a similar major transformation. But this piece... If everybody on this earth read this one page, and I'll encourage you to read it later, it's a letter he wrote his teacher. Last year in school at 12 years old, they were asked to keep a log of what do you eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week. The teacher analyzed it from her professional standpoint. And she wrote comments back to each of the kids. And she tells him, you know, well, you need to drink milk and you need your meat. And he went on and on and he explained in an incredibly respectful and intellectual way and he put her in her place and she avoided him for the rest of the school year and really she'd see him coming down the hallway and, and, and she'd go another direction. But this was a meme he created to go with it. Yes, veg kids do get enough protein. <laughs> another quick message. Some kids are picky kids. One question parent are always saying, well, my child doesn't like broccoli. You know what my answer to that is? Then don't make them eat broccoli. Find the foods your kids will eat, okay? Don't make food a battle, okay? There are more foods in the plant kingdom that you can choose from than you could ever get your child to try every possible food in the plant kingdom. So if one of them isn't working, keep trying until you find the ones that do, and I guarantee you will find the ones that do. Look at our kitchen table, by the way. That is our kitchen table on day one of one of our week-long camp programs. We don't only eat fruit at camp, but much of that, by the way, is homegrown, and that is just kids enjoying good positive fruit. Don't just give apples to the teacher, by the way, but also stock their cupboards with good vegan food. At the beginning of the school year, parents, ideally you go and you meet with the teacher, okay? And you say, I don't want to burden you. This is a key approach with parents, with other kids' parents, with teachers, with grandparents. You want to help people. You don't want to cause obstacles for people. Kids, you too. All right. Therefore, go to the teacher and say, I don't want to burden you, but I do want you to be aware that my child, blah, 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 eats this, doesn't eat that, whatever. And, and I, I don't expect you to go out of your way and do anything special for my child. You don't put more responsibility on their shoulders. You say, but I'd like to help. And if it's OK with you, can I find one little section in your cupboard and put in and whether it be a big box of Mary's Gone Crackers, cookies or whatever, and say, and if you're running out of these at some point. I'll come in and replenish them. Just let me know. Okay, I'll check in with you periodically. If there's another child in the class who's got food allergies, and if it's okay with their parent, happy for you to let them have. And oh, and I know how hungry teachers get and what, you know, your, your poor salaries and all of that. Feel free to help yourself as well. Make it easy on a teacher. Make it easy on people. So let's stock up on Mary's Gone Crackers as an example and put them in the school cupboard. Look, look at this kindergarten classroom cupboard. Books, food. Look at this second grade classroom cupboard. Lara bars, Cliff bars, and yeah, there's some books there, okay? Look at this great teacher's cupboard. Even vegan gummy bears, okay? More good vegan food in teacher's cupboards. This is one kid's backpack, okay? Kids, I've said, be prepared. Look at all the plethora in there. There are sweet potato chips and banana chips and olives and vegan gummies and pistachios. This kid is not gonna go hungry and be tempted to eat something else, right? Back to school lunch ideas. I could go on for hours about back to school uh, lunch ideas for going back to school. I give a whole session on it down in LA every August on what kind of options you can have. A lot of kids I know, like Danny, we were talking about before, he is like the master sushi roller. He rolls sushi almost every night for dinner, after dinner. He makes rice and he eats rice with dinner, but then he rolls sushi and then he brings the sushi 
to school and all the other kids are tempted and want his sushi so he brings extra so we can share with them kids will be tempted not every kid is going to turn towards the apple and say I want the apple okay although I'm all for apples but your child gets invited to a birthday party and you know that this is going to happen either go find a vegan bakery go to a Whole Foods go out and bake yourself whatever the case might be don't expect the parent at this other kid's birthday party to go out of their way to accommodate your child I will tell you there are some who will and they're really cool people but you go out of your way you call up and you say, you know, can I just double check with you what you're serving at, you know, Johnny's birthday party on Saturday? I don't want to put you out of your way, but, you know, you know my child you only eats certain things. And I want to make sure that, you know, he has something to eat and I'm happy to bring something. And if you know there's anybody else, I can bring extra for them too. Always put yourself out there. I deeply believe you put a little extra money out there, even if you have to, you're changing the world. It's a great investment. It's a great contribution to tomorrow. But here's some kids enjoying some great vegan cupcakes. Okay. My mom has taught me many good lessons over my life. One key lesson was she taught me you never go to anyone else's house empty-handed. If I was going down the street to a friend's house to sleep over, admittedly, my mom would send me with a box of chocolate and it was not vegan chocolate, but nonetheless. I encourage you to do, we don't want to say kill two birds with one stone because we don't kill birds, right? How about till feed two birds with one scone, right? And so I encourage you, send a good mannerly basket of something to the host, but then you also know your child has food to eat while they're at that person's house in case that family doesn't have the food that you would want your child or your child would be willing to eat. So here's just some, some examples. Fruit and nut baskets, things like that are just really great host gifts. And then you know this family has something vegan to eat that they might not have had otherwise. And your child will have something to sustain them while they're over there if they're not so accommodating. Parents, when you are the parents of sports teams and your child has to you know, bring snacks for the rest of the team, the classics still stand. For years, kids have been eating orange slices on the side of a sports field, eating sunflower seeds in the dugout. There is no reason that we need to be changing and messing with what's been working all these years. That's good stuff. You can make your own little trail mix bot and things for each kid. Jerky, good protein source, cactus jerky, stone walls. I saw somebody had it at one of the booths outside. Um, you know, nuts and seeds, olive snacking, cool cups, vegan jello cups, I mentioned. Go macro bars. Yes, that's our van, and there's uh, go macro on the side of our van. Make food fun. Find creative ways if you're willing. And kids, you can find creative ways to make things a little more tantalizing and fun and appealing to share with your friends. Make food fun for the kid in the kitchen so they enjoy the food that much more. Make sure kids eat a rainbow. And I don't mean Skittles. I don't mean artificially colored, artificially flavored processed junk. I mean eat a rainbow of good, healthy foods. People ask me, well, how much of this should I eat and how much of that should I eat? My answer is, unless you've got a particular health issue, don't worry about sitting there and measuring things. Just eat good, healthy things every single day and you'll get a good variety. Try to eat a little of each color at some point during the week. Okay? Do not enter. I love these signs. Do not enter. A couple of other quick things. I could go on and on, but I'm going to go through some quick things super, super quickly here. It's not just about what we eat. Make sure children, make sure you drink. Parents, make sure your children drink. Parents, make sure you drink. Adults, make sure you drink enough water. One of the biggest reasons people have health problems and maybe a vegan diet doesn't work for them. I've known people who have problems because they eat a lot of dried fruits, dried nuts, dried seeds, you know, dried uh, jerkies, etc. And we all need to drink loads of water, but the more of those dried foods you eat, the more water you need to drink. Yes, there she's got it right there. By the way, quick calculation, take your body weight in pounds. Let's pretend you weigh 100 pounds, okay? Divide it by four, that's 25. Turn it into ounces. You should drink 25 ounces of water every day. You weigh 200 pounds, okay? Divide that by four, that's 50. 50 ounces of water you should drink every day at a minimum is my recommendation. Plenty of water. Water, physical activity, workout, healthy eating, sleeping well. I could talk more and more about each of those items, but look at these healthy kids. Look at these healthy vegan kids, by the way. Doesn't matter what activity they do. They should be doing something, okay? They need to be up physically, playing, burning energy, and being healthy role models for their peers. Boom, 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 boom. Doesn't matter what the activity. I am not biased towards one activity or another. Sleep, eat, sleep, exercise. Get sleep, eat clean, drink water, exercise, repeat. There's your instructions for a healthy life. This is another lesson I do. It's on my website. By the way, the Ten Commandments to Better Health, five do's, five don'ts. I'm going to skip over that. 
We talked about kids need to be well educated, be well prepared with the answers to the questions that they are going to be asked. So whether you have your own library, you go to a library, you watch a lot of documentaries, be prepared with the answers. If you don't have answers to the questions, see me. I will be happy to give you answers to the questions. Okay, look at all these happy, healthy vegan kids. This kid, Marlon, I love talking about him because he lets me talk about him. Marlon came to camp first day and we had a bunch of fruit and we had bagels and other stuff too. And he looked at the fruit and he said, I hate fruit. So you know what I did? I put Marlon in charge of making a fruit salad that morning. Okay? And Marlon became one of the biggest fruit lovers of all time. Look at that beautiful plate that he created. Very artistically. Had a lot of fun with it. Okay? We've got kids there making, you know, tacos and burritos and sushi and scrambled tofu and all these good things. I could go on and on and on, but it's the makings for a best summer ever. Boom, boom. Do I have... Am I rushing or do I have a couple minutes? Nobody's telling me I'm done, so good. I want to get to one more quick lesson for you. The world needs more chips. More chips. What does the world need more? Say it. The world needs more chips. We do not need more potato chips. Maybe we need more beet chips. Maybe tortilla chips, chocolate chips, kale chips, what the British call chips. What is chips? Learn this acronym and live it, kids and adults alike. You should be a confident vegan. You heard me talk about it. I used Hero as a clear example, right, of walking and exuding confidence. Some people have told me, oh, my child's a vegan at school and they get picked on at school. And I will say the simple answer, and I'm not picking on those kids, is they don't walk the confidence they need to walk. If you walk with confidence, if you act with confidence, people are going to want to be more like you, like Hero's example. Be confident. Be healthy. I'm not saying I don't indulge in some of the junky vegan foods that we have here. I am not claiming to be a purist, but I will tell you, most of what you eat, most of what your children eat should be good, healthy vegan foods. You don't want to be the soda and potato chip vegan diet, okay? Because that could be a vegan diet, but it's not a smart vegan diet. You want to walk healthiness. If people see you as being healthy, they're going to want to be more like you. If they see you as being unhealthy, it's going to be all the ammunition they need to not want to be willing to consider going vegan. Be confident, be healthy. Be informed. We've talked about that already. You need to be prepared and equipped with the answers to the questions that you know people are going to ask you. Role play it with your children. Kids, role play it with each other. Role play it with me. Role play it with the dog. I don't know. Okay, but be prepared with answering questions. Be confident, be healthy, be informed. Be prepared. You remember that backpack filled with snacks? Fill your sports bag, fill your backpack, fill your locker, fill a bag in the back seat of the car. Always be prepared that you're never going to be tempted to eat something that you know you shouldn't eat or wouldn't want to eat because you're prepared. But be supportive, okay? I'm not putting down certain dear friends of mine who might be those in-your-face antagonistic kind of vegans, and I'm sure none of you are in this room right now, okay? Because they think they know everything so they wouldn't come to a session to learn, right? You want to be someone who's going to help others along the way. You want to help them, not hinder them. You don't want to push them away. If somebody asks a question, even if it seems like they're being just a real jerk and trying to annoy you by it, answer it respectfully, you know, and make it very a brief answer if they don't want to hear more, you know. Just provide positive information, provide positive, enjoyable snacks and treats for them to try. But confident, healthy, informed, prepared, and supportive. The world needs more vegans who are confident, healthy, informed, prepared, supportive. The world needs more chips. You got that, everybody? Last thing. Last thing. There is a vegan essay contest. It is li listed on the Kid Says' his website. The kid, the essay writer who we've talked about, he is one of the judges of this essay contest, and there will be essay prizes for adults and kids alike. It's an essay contest where you can win vegan chocolates, vegan, you know, uh, sh soap and shampoo baskets. You can win a week of vegan camp, etc. So I want to let you know there's a vegan essay contest, and you can be the next award-winning journalist. I want to thank you all. Get thinking, start writing, start activating yourselves, and what do we say? The world needs more? There you go. Thank you very much.